And and while we're on hurling, Matt, um, obviously it was it was the main talking point of the weekend. Limerick dominant without ever hitting anywhere near the, the higher gears on Sunday afternoon in Parky Queef. It finished two twenty to fourteen points. I think Limerick got maybe two points in the last ten minutes or so. Um, hit fifteen second half wides. Um, really took. Whatever throttle they had pressed in the first half, they took their leg completely off it in the second and still cruised to victory. <laughs> what do you say about this team, Matt, that hasn't already been said? I, I just don't know, Jack. Um, you know, I, I, I have been sticking to the word awesome and um, like, you know, past I, that. I, I don't know how, how many degrees of awesome you can get. Um, um, but, you know, it, it, it was just a phenomenal performance. Like, um, Team going into a national final, the second most important final in, in, in the calendar. And you're hit with a body blow um before the game with the with the withdrawal of, of um Declan Hannon through illness and um, Kyle Hayes through um through injury. And like those that came in, Jack, you know, Colin Coughlin and Mike Casey, they just seamlessly fitted in. Um it it it, it would give you an idea of the strength. Um the, the strength of this Limerick team. Now, Dan Morrissey, who was originally selected to play at fullback, moved out to centre-back. Um, had a fantastic game out there. Um, Mike Casey had to... I'm, I'm saying this now just to, to, to give you a sense of the bounty of riches that's at John Kiley's disposal. Mike Casey had to, had to go for a HIA after um, about 10 minutes of the second half. He had to come off. Richie English came in. Seem a, a seamless introduction again, um, just business as usual. Um, like I, I, I just don't know. Your last I, I, you words, know um, strange. You, I, I don't think they got out of first gear. I, but having said that, I was hugely disappointed with Kilkenny. And um, one one of the real positives that I took out of out of Cork on Sunday, um, first of all, of course, delighted with the Limerick win and and. Um, a uh, 14th National League title and the third in five years. But I, I was delighted with the, with the performances of Alan Gillan and, and Seamus Flanagan, mm. who showed real signs of coming back to to um, uh, to their top forum. And they gave the Walshers a bit of a torrid, um, a torrid hour on Lee side um, last, last Saturday or last Sunday evening. And, um, but overall, um, as I said, I was disappointed with Kilkenny, um, but you know, having said that, they were they were literally overpowered, and like uh, Kilkenny and all the other counties that are in the in the, in the um, Lee McCarthy Cup were hoping that Kilkenny would make a statement and and um, see if they if if Kilkenny, you know, the masters of finals. If if they could if if they could find cracks in the Limerick armor, but not a bit of it, Jack, not a bit of it. Um, um, th this was far more comprehensive uh, in in um, than than the semi final. Um, in many ways, there were there were periods of the game that mirrored the second half against Tipperary, um, like the defence, um, you know, so mean. Meanest defense in 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 in, oh, in in the country, um, like you know Sean Finn, Barry Nash, um, up up up, um, scoring a goal. He's back in position for the puck out in case he came down that direction. Dermot Burns, like five points from half back, um, this this is phenomenal stuff, Jack. This is off the charts. Yeah, you, you talk about um the defence being mean. I don't know, is it is it meaner having to mark Sean Finn at one side and not get a sniff of ball or to mark Barry on the other side and having to trail him and trail him unsuccessfully and he scores 1-1 one, one on you? <laughs> I don't know, it's a case of pick your poison there. And, and like in, I was listening to a few podcasts this week. It A few years ago, it was gone to the stage of you have to mark Limerick's wingbacks, Jeremy Burns and Kyle Hayes. Now you have to man mark their cornerbacks. Yes, like, I have you know, absolutely. What what do you what, how how does a team come up against Limerick? And if you're would say it will be Davy Fitz the first 
the first round and you say to Dizzy, I, I want a good few scores from you from play, but I want to make sure that, you know, Barry Nash or Sean Finn don't struggle to get one as well, you know? Yeah, look, Jack, Grafer Hurling Mind and me, Mark Grafer Hurling Mind and me have all failed, like even the like of Brian Cody has ha- have failed. Um, the, the, the list is getting longer all the time. And, and, um, uh, I, I, I just don't know. I, I you know, um, certainly I, I suppose the placing of Hugh Lawler at, at center half back for Kilkenny was probably a mistake. Um, I, I thought, yeah, uh, I, I think I, I, in I, a way I he, was sad, he was sadly missed in the full back line. hundred percent. Um, and that's obviously something that Kilkenny will look to in uh, go, going forward. But like, there's so many things to look to, you know, and um, expecting TJ Reid to come back and he will come back and, and, and be the Messiah to lift him. Maybe he will, but I, I, I think he has a huge job of work from what I saw last week. And uh, Yeah, because they were equally porous at the back as they were blunt going forward. I do give an awful lot of credit to Limerick with how they defended and, you know, how they dominated them. But it's not a case of, you know, they scored a lot but conceded more or that they, you know, didn't score enough but kept it low. You know, it was an 11-point hammering without Limerick ever really hitting their stride. And it's it's worrying for the likes of Waterford that are next up that if that was Limerick in the league, what will they be like in the championship? And it brings me to this question too, Matt. We've obviously been so blessed. Four All-Irelands, four Munsters, three leagues in five years. But is is this the best Limerick team we've seen so far in that period? The, the current, t- the, this year's team you're talking about? Yeah, right, 2023. I, poss- I, I, I possibly think it is, Jack. I, po- I, I possibly think it is. Now, um, you know, and we haven't spoken at all about the, the master, yeah. Keen Lynch. Yeah. He didn't score. He's no good. <laughs> you know, but um, he certainly was involved in an awful lot of things, you know, an awful lot of good things. Um, yeah. You know, and we won an All-Ireland. Look, Jack, the answer is simple. We won an All-Ireland last year without Keen Lynch. We have him this year. And we have Peter Casey this year. It has to be the best team. Yeah, but even, you know, like Colin Coughlin, you didn't miss Hayes at all or Dan Morrissey at wing back. Equally in front of him, Colin O'Neill. Tom Morris, he wasn't missed that much. We'd know Will and, and Barry Murphy, who I don't know anyone would have put Barry Murphy at midfield at the start of the year. And Barry did his usual, you know, and he's really pushing for, for a starting place. And you mentioned Keane and Peter were back. You know, I think 2021 was their peak, but I wouldn't be surprised if they surpassed this. And we'll know very soon because we do have championship coming up. But they're, you know, they're just an, an incredible team at... And uh, I think we'll, 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 we'll we've a hot seven days coming up with Waterford and Clare. Yeah, you know, so it'll be it'll be interesting. But another thing is, if if I had said to you before the game, obviously William was ruled out before the game. That that's fine. If you said Declan Hannon and Kyle Hayes were going to be late withdrawals, and that Groat Hegarty, Keane Lynch, and Peter Casey wouldn't score, I don't think you would have given me an eleven point victory somehow. But this team, regardless of the obstacle that is put in front of them. They're gonna go and beat you. I think. I think when there's obstacles put in front of them, and when 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 there are men down in the circumstances, I think it galvanizes the rest of them. Yeah, and I can imagine. I can imagine training this week because you know the likes of Will Donahue, he's not going to be guaranteed of his place. He's going to be you know hitting the ground running. Kyle the same. Tom didn't start. That the training I imagine will be absolutely ferocious. Over, over the next week and should only make Limerick better, which is a scare prospect. A scare, absolutely scary pro- pro- prospect. But look, Jack, I, I, I will always put a, put a note of, uh, put a note of caution. Um, the championship, and I think John Kiley was at pains to put that note of caution as well uh, after the match. Um, uh, the, the championship is a different animal, Jack. It is. And you know, teams will be, will be going in. Watford will... Probably have looked at Limerick since before the league started, but they've had three, four weeks now to really look at Limerick. And Davy is quite innovative, innovative. So if there's someone to put a halt on Limerick, you know, it could come in the first round. But as you said, if you put an absolute in their way, God forbid they lost. 
like I think the, the repercussions for another team, I don't think anyone would like to see Waterford beat Limerick in Munster because you can guarantee you'll get a response from, from Kylie in the side and it would probably be very difficult to overhaul him um, in terms of the teams coming down the line. But uh, that that was the league, Matt. Um, it was an interesting league. It was it was good. Actually, look, it, was, it, it got off to a bad start with the defeat by Cork. It was an unlucky defeat. Um, but look, like, there, there, there was a lot of positives to take out of that defeat in that, you know, uh, it was basically a, essentially a, an experimental Limerick team. Uh, there was a lot of people tried out on, on, the, on that first night against Cork and they only lost um, by a last minute point to, to, to Shane Kingston. Like, I suppose, you know, they learned the lesson from it because uh, they were comfortably ahead at half time by eight points, I think, and, and sort of lost their way in the second half and conceded a couple of goals and that sort of thing. And, um, but, you know, we're, in the end, we're only beaten by a point. But, you know, after that, their league campaign took off. Now, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great league and not just, yeah. you know, it, it didn't have a great final. Wasn't a great league, but we did make the point here, um, in terms of the league that we felt, and I, 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 I'm convinced of it actually that that Limerick came out of a much stronger group in the league. Um, yeah. uh, the, the Limerick group was tougher, no, no question about it. Um, and we saw that now because the two teams they faced the two teams that came out from the other side, and like. You know they were comfortable winners over both of them, so I think that was borne out. Yeah, and I suppose but as I only... said, John Kirby would be parking the league now. There'll be no more talk about the league um, because yeah. you, you know Waterford won the league and won it spectacular, a spectacular final last year, an excellent final. You know, and flopped in the in the Munster Championship. Yeah, I know, but the Slimmer team have have proven to us so many times that they're so reliable. Um, I suppose the only All Ireland contender, and that's with the greatest respect to uh, the likes of Dublin and Antrim, that li- the only one that didn't play was Waterford. They let play them. They let play them in a, in a week and a half's time. You know, from what we have seen, who is the closest to Limerick? Now we would have said Kilkenny, and I think they will be a different animal come Championship. But um, in terms of what we've seen so far this year, who's the closest? Galway and Tipperary. Both of them. Tipperary are coming. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think Galway. I think Galway and Kilkenny. I, I think are, are the closest to Limerick. Like, there's only five points in the game in Salt Hill, but again, Limerick completely is off the throttle. They could have hammered them if they want. And I think there was a there was a big case that with Limerick this year. They beat what was in front of them. Um. They racked up heavy leads and then stepped off the gas. And maybe it was a case of not showing their hand or they knew they'd enough enough done. But I think the gap from one to two is a lot bigger than the gap from two to eight or nine, you know, which is another scary prospect for, it, for it Limerick. It is a scary prospect. Um, and the three to come out of Munster. I'm going to come to you again next week, but right now the three to come out of Munster. Limerick, Tip and Cork. Limerick, Tip and Cork. I think I, I agree with you with Cork, obviously Limerick. I, I still have a, I have a feeling for Watford. I think there's something up their sleeve, but how couldn't you make the case for Clare either with uh, Mr. Tony Kelly to come through? So it, it's it's a really intriguing championship to come along. Um, we'll look at it in depth next week. Um, but before we go from the league, Matt, put up a poll yesterday um, just looking for who people thought was the player of the league. Um, just under a thousand responses. Who is your top three? And we'll see, do, they, do, do you agree with the people? Limerick's best performer over the course of the league. My my top three would be Barry Nash, uh, Dermot Burns and Tom Morrissey. Okay. They're, they agree with you in two. If you it, Number one is Barry Nash, is it? Yeah, I, 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 I look. I, I, I thought he was simply magnificent, and like, uh, I, I, all he did last time, there was more of the same. Like, he, 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 you know. Yeah. I, I, we, I, I think he, I think he's been incredible, absolutely incredible. 
for me, I think the the player of the league, and uh, he missed the semi final, which will go against him, was Dara Donovan. Um, yeah, Dara, Dara he... had a fantastic, um, had a fantastic league, very very consistent as well. But you see, when you're talking about the Limerick team, like, and um, you know, I, when you were saying to me there a, a couple of a week ago, the best five, I said make that twenty five. You know. Well, we're, we're coming to that in the next segment, Matt, so get ready. But top three at the moment, uh, Barry's in front, followed by Tom, and then uh, Dara is in third. But there's so many responses, and you could make a genuine case for anyone because the Limerick team is just so good. And uh, there's players popping from everywhere. You know, it doesn't matter if there's injuries or flus or suspensions. You know, the juggernaut just keeps rolling. And... Uh, a long wait last as we look forward to the championship. 